Hi, this is the Magnificent Midlife Podcast and I'm Rachel Lancaster. This is where we celebrate women in midlife and beyond. We challenge the status quo and bash those negative stereotypes about being an older woman. We're not over the hill at 40, 50, 60. We're just getting started. And the world needs us now more than ever. I'll be talking all things midlife, about issues that matter, and sharing fabulous stories of amazing women doing very cool stuff. Now is our time. My guest today is Mary Jane Fahey, and she is a creative director, a writer, a storyteller, a published author, and founder of Glorious Broads, which we're going to find out all about. She's on a mission to inspire older women to live full, authentic lives with no limitations. Welcome, Mary Jane. Thank you to be here. I love what you're doing. I want to start by asking you about your recent interaction with healthcare because I've seen a little rant you did on Instagram and we love a little rant on oh. here and I know you had a problem with your arm and you really didn't like the way you were treated in the hospital room so no, can you I tell us not. what happened Absolutely uh I had a fall on the street and uh oh the New Yorkers can be wonderful they came to my assistance immediately I went to the ambulance, I went to the emergency room, and all that went well. But when we went to the hospital, and they looked at my number, which is 72, they immediately assumed that I fainted on the streets. And I had a lovely nurse who came in and told me, you know, they're telling me, they're they're writing and changing the paperwork that you have fainted on the streets, and I'm so glad that he gave me that warning. So I had to rant and rave because I didn't want that on my paperwork. I did not f- faint on the streets. I cleared that up after, you know, acting like a banshee. Then the next issue was I was treated with honey, baby, sweetheart. <laughs> this is not A, professional, and B, I'm nobody's sweetheart, okay? <laughs> and then the third thing, which was really the worst, almost, was that I had my uh, man there. And he's younger than me. And uh, he, as I said, is masculine. And instead of looking me in the eye, the male doctors looked at him in the eye. So um, unfortunately, what was supposed to have been a healing experience was a ranting, raving experience. I got home in one piece, but it took a lot of bitching. So you didn't just get the ageism, you got the sexism, you got the double whammy of the gendered ageism, didn't you? Yes, I did. I got double whammy. But really, uh, I mean, the two things that the worst, I, I, I really was annoyed with honey, sweetie, but that they, when they saw my age, it was like, Oh, you you fainted first. No, no, no. And then talking into the eyes of my man. Anyway, I gave them. I, I gave it to them. <laughs> I'm glad you did. And I did. Because it's it's outrageous, isn't it? It, it really is. is. And and I think there's that. You said that um, in the emergency room where they hadn't seen your number, yes. everything, everything was fine. And you yes. felt that it shifted when people saw, saw your age. Yes. Yes, absolutely. When I went to the hospital and they saw my age, it was a shift into treating me like... Uh, a granny and (laughs) grannies can be anything but they treated me like when I'm this (laughs) well they infanticide not what's the word in infantilized you yes um, that is the word by by calling you all those those names didn't they absolutely And, and, and they assumed certain things about you just because of your age. It, it's classic, actually, and I'm really pleased that you did that Instagram rant because we have to call it out. It is Absolutely. so important to call yes. it out because people don't realize they're doing it. Yes, 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 absolutely. And I got so much support in that Instagram. 
I just think the medical profession here in the United States and ageism is so prevalent. I mean, I don't know how prevalent sexism is. I, su I suspect plenty from, because I didn't have any women doctors. It was, it was Labor Day weekend, so I had all men, and they were probably not the usual shift. But um, the ageism was really frightening. And also, when I left... They told me it would take uh, a very long time to recover. And I'm not saying I'm superwoman, but I am saying I'm walking just fine. I am recovering just fine. It's all these assumptions that you do not take care of yourself and that you're living in another century. Maddening. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And it really shouldn't be like this in 2022, should it? It just no. shouldn't be like this, and yet it is. And uh, I, I was actually, I did a little, um, <laughs> I did a little rant on on Twitter today. It was only a very tiny little rant, <laughs> but we have a new king. Yes, and we're going to have. Well, we already have a queen consort. Yes, we never had a king consort. Yes. And I thought, what's going on with that? Yes. We never had a king consort. And yes. the queen wanted Camilla to be called, to be known as the queen consort. And I think her rationale for doing that was to, you know, sort of brush away all of the angst in the past about people not really liking Camilla and to give her the status that she has constitutionally as the wife of the king. But that doesn't negate the fact that the Duke of Edinburgh was the Duke of Edinburgh. He exactly. wasn't the king consort. So yes. it's one rule for her match and another rule for his match. And I'm yes. thinking, excuse me, 2022? Yes, yes, yes. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Good. And what was your response on Twitter? Um, somebody Twitter. told me that um, Prince Albert, who was Victoria's husband, was the prince consort. So then I went and did a bit of Googling, as you do. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going off on a right tangent here. Um, <laughs> so I did a bit of Googling and I found out that the wife of the king is usually known as the queen consort and the husband of the queen is usually known as the prince consort. So Prince Albert was the prince consort and the Duke of Edinburgh, bless him, he didn't want that fancy title. He just wanted to be Duke of Edinburgh. He didn't want to be any prince consort. So fine. But it still doesn't get away from the fact no. that it's one rule for women yes. and another rule for men. Yes, 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 yes. Amazing. So, so that's a bit like I'm thinking, hmm, not sure about that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Can I tell one more story that I will Please put up do. tomorrow? Please All right, since do. we're ranting about this. I put up, um, I'm kind of falling in love with TikTok. Don't judge me. <laughs> no, I'm on TikTok. I'm oh, there. okay. <laughs> but I'm getting a re a lot of really beautiful response from young women. Yeah, I, me too. I I I find them. Oh yes, that's wonderful. I find I, we call it broad hunting, and I find these women on the streets. I ask them a couple of questions about their lives, what they have to say, and I had a, a conversation with an older woman. I guess she's about seventy, and she got off on this fun rant about. I am not a granny. I am not a mother. I chose not to be a mother. I have a beautiful life. Please do not judge me. And do you know that she got so many judgments on TikTok at this age and stage in our life for choosing not to pursue what was her real purpose in life, mothering. That to me shocked me, usually not by the young woman, but a lot by men. It was, oh, I'm going to write about it uh, That's tomorrow. That's misogyny then, isn't it? Goodness there me. There we go. That again. <gasps> that again. And Naughty just, little uh, woman not doing what she's supposed to do. And, and this should Breed. be. Breed. Exactly. But it just seems so old-fashioned. This should be a normal conversation. I chose not to do that. Anyway, I will, you'll see my rant on that tomorrow or the next day. Good. And over here, it may not be the same in the States, but over here... Any woman over the age of 60, so that's me in four years' time, right. is referred to as a granny. <laughs> and and, and that, that is ageist, but it's also so full of prejudice against the women who have not 
been mothers who have absolutely n- who will never be a grandmother. Yes. Why do you automatically have to be a granny? Why does a woman's status still have to be tied to her reproductive abilities? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that is what she was addressing. And a lot of people say, hey, granny. Hey, you old bitch. <laughs> That's amazing. I was really quite surprised at today, 2022. There you and go. And that, so, that language is so misogynistic. Yes. Yes. You know, if you're not, if you're not complying, then you're a bitch. Yes. Although she did say, you could call me a bitch or a witch, but don't call me granny. I must say Because she's funny. Good for her. Okay. So she was asking for it a little bit. A but little even bit. so, it's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me about Glorious Broads. What is it all about? Okay. Um, Glorious Broads is something that I founded about six years ago. And at that point, uh, there was not too much of older women covered and I'm going to say honored. And that's what I decided to do. What inspired me actually was coming from the very matriarchal family that I did come, six women in that household. But my mother, as she got older, uh, lost her purpose and uh, lost her fire. And my grandmother did too. So I had always been attracted to real kick-ass women who really went after what they wanted to go after and broke the rules. Believe it or not, the thing that really got me to start was seeing an obituary in the New York Times about this woman who was about 84, embraced being an author at that time, being a motorcycle writer at that time, and lesbian lesbianism, all in her 80s. <laughs> what, you mean she'd been heterosexual up until yes, her 80s? Yes, yes. Good for her. According to this article. And <laughs> I just like, that is what I want to be, that ballsy. So I started looking around me. I do live in New York City. And I realized I was surrounded by glorious broads. And one person led me to another, led me to another. And I am attracted to people who are, you could call them radical, but off. uh, They have an edge to them. And Mm -hmm. I think that edge is what inspires other people, even if it it gives them a little push. Um, I love that they're not celebrities for the most part. Every once in a while, I break the rules, and I had Kathleen Turner in there. But she's amazing what she had gone through. So that's what Glorious Broads is about. It's to give each other a little push to be everything that we can be and let go of fear. And that's a hard one. Let go of fear. Let go of paranoia about time passing, because it does. And you literally go out and find these women and interview them on the street. Is that right? Well, that's what I do for TikTok. That's a a new part of what I do. I I find them on the streets, and that has been so fun. I don't know what I'm going to do in the winter. (laughs) But in the summer. will be there. (laughs) Yeah, yes. But in the summer, but we'll be like, but in the summer and in the fall, it has been so much fun. And they stop and they talk to me, probably because I I am a woman and I am over 60. And um, they want to talk about what they're doing and what they're up to. So that is the, my TikTok part, part of it. And what do you find they have in common? You know, um, I think what they have in common is chutzpah and a real independence. I also think most of these women, and this includes me, went through a real transcendence in their life. They had to let go of what they were and really embrace what they were becoming in this in this other phase of their life. I mean, for me, I'm going to use myself. Um, I had a very successful career in publishing, and suddenly that career was falling away. And I don't think it was ageism. I think it was the industry. And I had a hard time of letting that go. But through the uh, going through that stage, a little you know, a little dabble in Buddhism. <laughs> and a, a lot of inner work. I came out stronger and more powerful and chose a different purpose in life. And that's what most of these women also have very clear on what they want next. They're not clinging on to who they were, are they? No. I think that, that is 
the trap that we can really get into. And I, I see it very much around menopause because that's, yes. that, that's where I started doing what I do. And when yes. menopause comes along, women want to cling to what yes. they were before. They don't see this transition as anything positive. So no. <laughs> I'm over here banging the positive drum, you know, and I'm now 15 years through menopause because <laughs> it came very early for me. Yes. But it's that clinging on and it doesn't get us anywhere, does it? And I think it's, it's so important for us at, at menopause age and post-menopause and into our third age and whatever age yes. to always be looking forward, always to be thinking about, yeah, what's next? What do I want next? This isn't it. No, this isn't and it. And this new iteration of me isn't a bad iteration it's just a different me I'm different now I'm not yes. any worse than I used to be yes 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 but that takes bravery and that mm. takes an open mind and that takes a lot of you know it's corny everyone says it but it does take self-love <laughs> and I have a particular issue as I, I I don't read you every day but uh with the beauty industry and how it it just focuses on us feeling bad about ourselves. I mean, what is wrong with having some lines and having a face that looks like you've been through something? You know, we take care of ourselves. That's the thing, too, and I talk a lot about that, too. With most of the women that I talk to, they do take care of their, themselves, and, and I mean live healthy lives. And by remaining healthy, we can be beautiful as, as we age. It's... Um, <sighs> Our, our, our getting older is, at least for me, very different from my mother's and my grandmother's getting older. It was, a, it was a, like a cave-in. And this is kind of a, embracing a different, more bountiful life. But if we're confident um, and we're embracing aging and everything that comes with it, we're not going to buy all those products no. that people want us to buy. They want us to be unhappy so that we'll... Exactly. Oh, everything. Exactly, exactly. And I have some friends, no no name dropping here, beautiful, kind of the most beautiful women in the world. I'm sitting across and they're in that industry and that industry has done some real harm to them, real harm. I'm also into women as they age, uh, being sensual, being sexual, uh, you know, holding on to the desire, holding on to the pleasure because you deserve it. Some women that I've talked to uh, said, nah, that life's over for me. And if that's your decision, great. But you you can have this as a part of your life. It, for me, it's been better than ever once I hit 60. And and uh, uh, it, and this new life and this new freedom, no more periods. Yay. I know. I Isn't know. it great? <laughs> it's amazing. I can wear white trousers every day. It's just brilliant. <laughs> Not exactly. that I do, you know, but I could you if could. I wanted to. I could. You could. You could. Yeah. So um, I don't know if you have that, and I'm not pushing her show, but I think that it's so rare that a television show gets our age. I'm older than you, but it doesn't matter. Middle age on right. And uh, there's a woman called Pamela Adler. I think I've got her na last name right. And she's a comedian. And she has a show called Better Things. And the way she describes or the way she talks about, the way she lives middle age on her show is hilarious and so true. The changes that you have to accept and the changes that you love. She's a sensual, sexual person. She talks about being invisible and she kind of does this to it. <laughs> It's the most delicious so, show. Think, was there a finger being being oh, yes. sort of stuck yes. up there yes. for, for yes. the for the non visual yes. audience? Yes, <laughs> very definitely. So it's called Better Things, and I think it's the best thing out there ever. Oh, I have to check it out. What's it on? What? Uh, I saw it on Hulu. Oh, we don't have that over Yeah, here. but you know, mm. look, maybe well, it'll it'll arrive on something yes. eventually. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So many things you do over over there. That's so great. <laughs> Well, I was going to say you have this very glorious silver hair. And I think in New York, that's quite unusual, isn't it? I mean, certainly when I was there, I didn't, I didn't no. see it very much. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, it's 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 changed a bit in the last five years. But, um, you know, I, I really just kind of looked in the mirror and uh, just thought, you know, this color might be better than this color that I'm putting on myself. And it's also costing, you know, 300 bucks a shot. <laughs> and I'd rather pay that 300 bucks on going to the theater or going for a trip to London. <laughs> so when did when did you make that decision? I say about two years ago, two years ago. I also, you know, am blessed. Yeah, I'm going to say the word blessed, that I had older sisters that were liberating and fun. My older sisters, too, I think, looked at my mother's life and just said, mm, not me. And they were all uh, artists, writers, and uh, two of them just grew the hair in white, and they look great. So I just thought, you know, I'm going to follow that. Good. I was lucky to have that as good as a you know a way to grow older. It's at this stage that I always tell my guests and anybody else who can see me on camera, I don't dye my hair. It's just that it is still this color at <laughs> fifty six, um, and my mother still has hair in her a color in her hair at oh, eighty eight. Really? Yeah. But you know, it's a lot it's... paler. It's a lot fairer. But I'm never going to go grey. I'll probably go very blonde. I think. Oh, that, that oh that's fabulous too. To <laughs> but it's kind of like getting your face done. I don't judge you. You want to get your face done? Do your thing. You want to color your hair? Do your thing. All, all, all that matters is you're happy. I know that's fine. But here I am. I'm promoting authentic aging. Yes. <laughs> no, yes. And I look as if I dye my hair. Ah. So so I'm always saying, look, there's little white bits here in the fringe. Honestly, I promise. <laughs> that's true. That's true. You that's, do. That's the issue. I'm sort of, you know, I don't want people to think, oh, my God, it's all right for yes. her. Yes. You know. No, that's, that's, that's legit. Like Ashton. I know she dyes her hair white, doesn't she? I know, she, I know. She did. This is Ashton <laughs> Applewhite because she kept getting hassled about, you know, it was all very well promoting, you know, <laughs> aging naturally and not I dyeing know. your hair. That was pretty <laughs> great. And then she decided to let her, her real color uh, come in and she was getting crap for it. It's like, oh. You know, you got to be who you are and defend. But hair, woman's hair, this is this is the thing. It shouldn't be an issue. No. Should it? No. It shouldn't be an issue. It should not. People shouldn't be feel an they issue. have a right to comment on a woman's hair. Full yes. stop. Yes, yes. Oh, there's so many things about men, women, about our looks, about our family, about our reproductive uh, organs, and how it still comes up in conversations or in. Uh, you know, you read an interview and the first thing is the mother of, you don't see that much when you uh -huh. read an interview of a man. It's uh -huh. bullshit. Anyway. Yeah. <sighs> so many things to fix, aren't there? There's so much stuff to sort out. Yes. And that's what I love about Glorious Broads. We're just like, we're we're giving you another to think about. I like that because I think women, we really need to have inspiring women to look to we need examples yes. of difference because yes. it's so easy to just get sucked into well this is the way it is this is the way it's always been and you need to dye your hair and you need ah. to cover up your wrinkles and you need to do this and that and the other and it's really nice to see examples of older women doing things authentically and doing it the way they want to do it. And as I said in the intro, not accepting any limitations on themselves. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, recently, I had a conversation with Faith Rangel, the artist. She's about 91 now. And something that stuck with me, she said, uh, I decided to always stay in the game. <laughs> She's a 91-year-old artist, just had another major show. Um, that inspires me. That makes me think I'm 72 now. I may be around for another 20 years and I'm going to keep, this is an overused word, but reinventing. It's, yeah. it's, keep at it. I think it's so important. I think there are all these things in society about how people should age, about how we decline, about how we become more dependent. And, and it's, it's rubbish. It really it is rubbish. Is rubbish. It, it, it's what we have been conditioned to believe about getting older, but it doesn't need to be like that. And I think that's what's so great about the Glorious Broads because 
you're showing people that it doesn't need to be like that at all. We can, we can rewrite the way we're going to age. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, thank you. In fact, I just, um, I'm working on a sizzle for uh, a television show. And this is all focused on... What's a uh, sizzle? Oh, a sizzle is um, like a little a trailer. Uh, yes, a little. Yes, exactly. It's a little like taster. A sizzle on the grill. Is that yes, what it is? Yeah, exactly. Taster. It's oh. uh, It'll give you uh, a little feeling of what the show will be. But anyway, the fun of it is I'm talking to women over 50 about their sexual lives. And some of the things and some of the women I, 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 I found are just uh, astounding. Some have decided it's not for them, but a lot have decided, oh, it is definitely a part of my life. And who knew that? I think I like the idea of reaching women from 40 on, but also younger women, that this is what you can look forward to. You don't hang it up at 50. Yeah. So what has made your sex life so good in your 60s or 60s and 70s? What, what, <laughs> what is, what, did something change? Was it a new man? <laughs> what was no, it? no, there were plenty of new men. <laughs> 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 no, I have to say, um, even though I was confident to a degree with how I looked when I was younger, I think for me it was more confident in, Yes, how I looked, but confident more in my being, confident with what I wanted, saying what I wanted, not shy about it. Though I certainly, when I was young, thought of myself as a feminist, which I was, but now I've grown into it more. I think post-60, it was not so much demanding, but often leading. And also being a, lit, a little more picky, if not a, a lot more picky, of who my partners would be. While I was young, it was very into volume, <laughs> frankly. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's being more picky and um, knowing my body more, you know? How about you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been this, with the same man for, for um, 17 years now as my second wow. husband. And... Uh, in fact, if you want to hear about uh, what he thinks of our sex life, you can listen to episode 100. <laughs> he was he was my first male guest and he was very brave. And oh. he came on the podcast. And, and bless him, we talked about how it was different yes. now, yes. but that didn't make it any worse. And bless yes. him, he even said, you know, it's actually, it's even better. So, yes. so that, was, that was very lovely. And it, it is different but it's very satisfying and and I'm I'm very happy with it. You know, it yes. works for me, it works for him. And it's interesting actually. I yeah, I'll go off on a complete tangent here. So Yeah, go do. <laughs> so I do have a bit of a problem with vaginal dryness and I've talked about it on the podcast. Quite yes. happy to yes. talk about it. Use a really good lube. Yeah. But when I was in Peru recently, I went for three weeks in Peru and we took the lube. <laughs> um, and I forgot to, I do sometimes use some vaginal estrogen and I just forgot to do that. Yeah. And I don't know whether it was the coca tea I was drinking for, for the altitude sickness or what it was, but I didn't need anything at all. Thank you oh, very really? much. And it was like, oh, well, here's something that would be interesting to research. You know, yes. was it higher altitude? Was it the fact that I was super relaxed? Yes. That we had really connected because we were on a holiday? I don't know. I'm sharing that very little intimate yeah. little detail there. <laughs> as I like to That's do sometimes on the podcast. But isn't that interesting? Yes. I and I always, want to, I always want to think, Okay, what changed? <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> well, my next vacation, I will make sure it has a lot of high altitude involved. <laughs> and the coca tea, because of course, I mean, it has no real, I'm telling everybody, it is the original product of cocaine, but it has nothing narcotic in it at all. It's yes. like the coca bean and a Mars bar, you know, the, yes. they, they're so far removed. Yeah. Um, that's not a very good example. Actually. I, think, <laughs> I can't think of a better one, but, but it's, it, it literally is like drinking green tea, but it's a very nice green tea and it really did help with the altitude sickness. Yes. And that, we were having that every day. So I'm 
I'm just thinking, was it the coca tea? You know, but of course, because of this link to cocaine, you can't even bring it out of the country. So oh. I had to, I had to just have my three weeks of coca tea, and then that was wave, <laughs> wave goodbye. <laughs> Make sure I hadn't even got a tea bag in my in my suitcase because they were given out everywhere in Peru and all the hotels and yeah, you know, fascinating co- coffee and coca tea. <laughs> well, uh, vaginal dryness is the worst. And I too take a uh, an estrogen uh, a low dosage uh, hormone, and it saved my one of the things that saved my sex life. Certainly in my fifties, when that mm. first happened, it was like what? It still comes as a shock to women that yeah. this happens. But it can get better, can't it? I yes, this it is can. what I'm wondering now. Is like is is actually have I turned another corner? Yes. And who knows? I don't know. We'll we'll find out. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Well, I keep I keep it up. I it was really awful for me in my thir- in my 50s, but um I I keep it up twice a week, low dosage just in case it's that's what's keeping me so uh succulent. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to take a chance that'll leave. Yeah. But that's that's important. It's you know, it's it's important People talk about quality of life, and I think I think it is all about quality of life. I'm not personally; I'm not a fan of systemic hormones long term. Yes. But I think the the localized vaginal estrogen is is yes. a very helpful thing for a lot of women. Yes. And if it means that women don't have to say, "Well, that part of my life is over," yes, and that's really important, isn't it? Yes, yes, it is. It's just again, I'm not making a decision for all women, but that's. That's desire. That's a big part of life that mm. I want to remain integrated into my life personally. The other thing I discovered, we're going a bit of a tangent again, was um, the power of mindfulness. There's a book that I wrote about in my book called, I think it's something like Sex and Mindfulness or something. But it oh, established, and this. It, this really actually, it really works for me because. We tend to think about other things, don't we? We're, yes. We're, you know, and we're I'm doing, writing that down. I'm doing yeah. the to-do list. And then that takes us away from focusing in on the sexual response, focusing in on the sensations. And I'm sure when we were younger, we were so enthralled to the experience, we wouldn't have been thinking about our to-do list. But yes. as we get a bit older, I think that we do tend to get a bit distracted. So actually bringing it back and being really mindful, I have found very, very powerful. Yes, and I, I need more to read conscious. that book. It's, it is a good book. Mm. It's in, it's, I've quoted it in my book, but I can't Mm-mm. remember what it is now. But I'll, put, I'll try and remember to put it in the show notes for this episode. Oh, good. Um, also, I, I, I suspect this is true of a lot of young women. When I was younger, I was into performance, performative sex. You know, I'm going to be the best. And I don't think that way anymore. Now it's... Mm. I'm going to get the best. Thank you very much. <laughs> now I'm going to get the best. <laughs> exactly. It's, I'm not performing. <laughs> We're both, you know, engaged. That's the difference, yeah. too. Yeah. Oh, that was a nice little tangent. I wasn't was expecting fun. that one. That was, yeah, it was very yeah. good. <laughs> so apart from your sex life, what else do you like about where you are in life now? Well, I would say uh, there's a lot of things I like. First of all, much more courageous, much more courageous. There's not those uh, hanging on, what should I do? It's more like do, you know, think it out and then do. I had a successful career as a designer, but then I always thought maybe I could be a writer, but I was afraid to, frankly, uh, face that blank page. And now I had an idea, I get on it. Um, so it's much more courage about things that I, 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 I used to just be worried about. Also, I, I like, it may sound perverse, but other people have talked about it. I like that there's less time ahead of me, so it makes me use my time more. I also like the practices that I put into my life that I thought long ago I do and now I actually do, which is meditation. Um, I always worked out, but now the workouts I do are very involved with breathing and slower, and um, it helps me really just appreciate life. When I go for a walk, a, 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 you know, a, a fast walk, I don't plug things into my ears personally. I would just rather 
view the city I love and I'm in and uh, hear the sounds. It's, I think, just a, mo a much more, a much more present in, in my life. I don't have a, a, a zillion friends because I do protect my time alone to write and think, but the friends that I have are nourished. So it's a mu much more particular and uh, courageous life that I did earlier. It's nice, isn't it? It's I, great. I think that is one of the best things about getting older, is actually, it was all of that, all of what you've described, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I can't describe enough the importance of, uh, a good friend of mine is, her name is uh, Yamanazaki. She's a healer, and she is kind of all over the place if you go to social media, but she's taught me so much about, especially through COVID, about breathing through it. I have, you know, messed up feet. She had me work on my feet and my feet are better now. So many things you can do for yourself rather than the traditional thinking of whether it's going to a doctor, whether it's going to, I mean, I have therapists are great, but there's so many things you can do for yourself that will bring you to your next path. I've certainly experienced that as I've gone through this period in my life. It's um, finding the resources that I have inside me. Yes. And uh, the older I get, the more I discover those. And I think yeah, meditation is, is very powerful for both grounding me and for establishing, working out what's yes. there. And where I want to go. Yes, exactly. And I love um, I love journaling as well. So I'm a big fan of journaling and doing the free journaling and asking asking uh, a question. You know what what do you want me to know? <laughs> yes, and beautiful. I, I, that powerful. I miss. I miss because oh, this is my dominant it, hand, oh. and, and and I'm not modern enough to talk into something. I'd rather I'd rather. But you know, um, speaking of how you change when you're older. I always wanted to be on the scene when I was young, you know, and I was, but I, I suffered from FOMO, you know, fear of missing out. That mm -hmm. is absolutely not a part of my life now. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, so all these things that you break loose of, and that's, that's what I want, you know, audiences, your audience to understand. So what would you most like women to know? Well... I'm not even looking at my notes. It's much more interest, interesting to think about it. You know, we're always going to have a little fear, but if you could really embrace the fact that everything is changing and you are going to change with it and to really think deeply about that, like the seasons, like the way your face changes, like your hands, like your talents, and to nurture each part of the change. That's a, that's a big one. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Magnificent Midlife Podcast. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe, follow, and share it. Also, giving a five-star review really helps get the word out. You'll find the show notes at magnificentmidlife.com. That's also where you can get my book, Magnificent Midlife, transform your middle years, menopause and beyond. Make the very best of your next chapter. Help me change the world, one magnificent midlife woman at a time.